and we are live guys welcome to another live stream from the men of high value channel my name is Joseph Darling today we're going to go through some serious stuff we're going to look at a video from 60 minutes Australia let's hope that they let me have this on my channel um, and it's called the heartbreaking mental health crisis in young men that needs ner urgent action we're basically gonna talk about suicide and depression and I want to help all of those people out there who are struggling with this because it's not necessary when you understand how it works okay now obviously we're you know those feelings the emotions that they have the conditions and the, the the situation that they're in it's a serious one and it's not one that can you know just be scoffed at or you know or or be like why are they like this no this is this is their journey and they're having a very difficult one and we need to help them and we've got the information that is needed for them to be helped so if any of you guys are in a very difficult circumstance, I ask you to get professional help and, um, you know, and we'll go through the video and you'll hear me talk about it um, throughout. But, you know, most people have gone through some form of episode in life where they were extremely depressed for, for quite some time. And you who are watching might have had that. And hopefully the video that I make today can help and assist in that regard so that you know what happened and it doesn't happen to you again. Or if it does happen, you know exactly what is needed for you to get over that specific thing and look at it at, at a different angle. Because that's very often what, what happens is that they're looking at it from a very hopeless situation where they feel that they have no options. And that's really the 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 core of the situation that they're in. Anyway, I haven't even started the video. Let's let's get through it. A few days ago, the rugby union community farewelled one of its heroes, the hulking lock Daniel Vickerman, who played 63 tests for Australia. To the bewilderment and heartache of the country, Dan took his own life two weeks ago. His death highlights what Lifeline is calling a national emergency. Suicide rates in Australia are at 10-year highs, and young men are particularly overrepresented in the statistics. In Victoria, 25-year-old Jake Fitzsimmons was a local footy hero, had a decent job and plenty of great mates. But late last year, the depression he suffered also became too much to bear. As Peter Stefanovic reports, for the sake of all the Dan Vickermans and Jake Fitzsimmons, we must do more to help and support those who are vulnerable. Absolutely. When he was playing for he was playing for his team and he knew what he had to do, when he had to do it. For Melbourne mum, Daddy Fisher, the MCG holds treasured memories. This is his peak year, the footy. Like, he absolutely kicked up. I don't know if you guys can even hear what they're saying, so I'll just put on some subtitles, which might help. But they are, they are Australian, so I mean, come on. <laughs> Sometimes it's difficult to understand what they're saying. Not really, but you know. It was here where Debbie proudly watched her firstborn son, Jake Fitzsimmons, or Fitzy, that his mates, live out his high school football dream. Two grand finals on the MCG. Doesn't get much better than that. But now, it's also the home of heartbreak. Somewhere, during that tricky transition from high school footy hero to adulthood, Fitzy started to lose his way and spiral into darkness. He made me picture sort of like a, a cyclone, I think, sort of, you know, raising up and then him just continually trying to push it down all the time. Three months ago, Fitzy took his own life. What did he say that made you scared? his life. He just said to me, he goes, I don't know how much longer I can fight for, Mum. You know, and that's when I said to him, I said, you can do it. I said, whatever you need, you know, I'm here always, always, you know. That must have given you a hell of a fright, though, when he's described Oh, I, yeah. I, I, I just, I can't imagine how, I, yeah, I, no, I can't imagine how it, but. Yeah, that was his first tattoo, so. Southern Cross. Yeah. Aussie Pride. Aussie Pride. Proud Australian. Absolutely. Yeah, loved everything about it. So loved cricket, the footy, the anything. Like, if Australia was in it, he was cheering for them. He's, uh, just On the outside, 
the cheeky 25 year old was kicking goals. What were his interests around here? Football, uh-huh. girls, uh-huh. can't yet, because he got his lawyers. Important thing to remember, what was his favorite things to do? Football, girls. That's what she mentions. Let's keep that in mind as we go through this information, because it's crucial. It's vital information, okay? Privately, Fitzy had been battling depression and anxiety for years, refusing to let his footy mates in on his illness. Mum, the younger sister Rihanna, were the only ones who knew just how troubled he was. By the way, as someone said, uh, I don't know what her name is, I just watched a very actually fascinating uh, interview with um, a psychologist, neuroscientist slash psychologist from South Africa, who was talking on the Lewis Hose uh, podcast, and she was talking about how this right here is not an illness. It's not an illness. It's a chemical imbalance for sure. There's something going on in the brain that is not good. That's not optimal, but it's not an illness. It is it it, it is um something that can be fixed, okay? And it is really based upon how that person views the situation that he's in. Okay? So it's really an a, a Obviously, it's subjective, right? It's your own experience of what's happening, and it's his own experience of what's happening, but that's the problem. It's not... The way that he's looking at it will create the chemical imbalance, will create all of the things, including, of course, if he begins to to use substances and to to do other things, that, that creates even a worse angle of looking at things. You know, and and a more hopeless situation than you had before, then it's just gonna get worse, right? So, but it's not an illness. And that woman in that video, I wish I could explain to you guys uh, where what her name is. I just, uh, yeah. But anyway, she, it's a very fascinating interview. I'll I'll try and link it down below. But um, but let's keep going. I knew for the last twelve months that it was serious. I knew, and I quite often say to him, you know. Do you think you need to go to the doctors or something like that? And it'd be, no, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I think I can, you know, pull myself out. I'm just having a bad day. It must have been awful for his sister to see. Yeah, it was hard because he, I always grew up, like, he was all I had. He was my big macho protector. Don't go near my sister. Mad. Like, he was, I idolised him. If I had him, I didn't need anyone else. Um, and to see him crumble, yeah, it um, makes you crumble, that's for sure. You see that there's no father there. It's a very important information, okay? There's no dad in the home. Interesting. So it, it's very often, like the men who do not have male influence in the home, especially as they become teenagers, tend to have more difficulties than those that do have a father in the home. But very often the father in the home, if the father is home, you know, in today's society, they're very weak. And because they're weak, the, the, the sons very often look at them and it's like, that's not what, my li- what I want my life to be like, you know? They look at their father and it's like, he's not the best role model for me. And because of that, they end up, you know, turning to things that, trying to find a better way to live their lives. And that's normal. But, but if that's direction that you're going in as a man, because you don't have a father or you have a weak father who who kind of lost his way right then you're trying to you know fumble trying to figure out what, what way and what direction you should have men don't have purpose these days a lot of men don't have purpose and that is really the key men not having purpose it will it will lead them towards immediate gratification and immediate gratification will lead them to this dark path. We don't want men to move towards this dark path. Men weren't designed for this, of what we're listening to right now. Men and women were designed for happiness. But men become happy when they move towards masculinity, while women become happier the more they move towards femininity. And But when, when we do the opposite, it becomes very dif- difficult. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with my channel, you'd be like, well, how is, how is this guy feminine? 
okay, so let's let's just define that real quick. Femininity is the inability to control one's emotions, no, one's thoughts, one's emotions, and one's behaviors. Okay, masculinity is to be able to control one's thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. Okay, am I saying that women can't control their thoughts, emotions, and behaviors? If they're burdened and have a lot of stress in their lives, no, they're not able to. And I can easily say that. This is why we're trying to unburden women, okay, with this movement, because then they're actually able to control their thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, and are glad to do so. Okay, and then suddenly life is amazing. But now we're talking about men in terms of if they're not able to control their thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, they're going to move towards immediate gratification because that's the only way that they can kind of drown out the problems in their lives. Okay, like, you know, the more feminine a man is, the more he's moving against nature, okay? And against nature means that he has to suppress those things that are in him, like he's not accepting the feedback that his body is telling him. This, what you're doing right now is not good. Do we need to change this circumstance? And, and uh, the depression and, and all of the chemical imbalances that are happening are, are simply feedback to let us know that something needs to be handled. Something needs to be taken care of and you need to do it now. You need to do it fast. And, and people take this message and then they're like, oh, okay, so I need immediate gratification because that solves my problem. And it does, short term. Okay, drugs, alcohol, and, and porn, and all of those things that are immediate stimulants do solve their problems short term okay but it exacerbates or makes the problem worse in the long term it makes them more addicted and more hopeless and more in a difficult situation than they were before so th this is what we need to understand though that everything that's happening with you there's nothing wrong with you it's not an illness it is, it, we need to, to switch that around and, and, and see that it's, we simply have to help you understand yourself better and help you understand that this is just your body's mechanism telling you that something is off and something needs to change and, and you need to do something about it now. And it's not immediate gratification and stimulants that's the answer. It's something else. And I hope to kind of clarify that in this video hoping to help as many people as possible. But notice that I'm saying that this guy's feminine and I'll explain throughout the video why he was feminine. Although he looks masculine from the fact that he likes girls, he likes sports, I mean, that's quite masculine, right? You'll, you'll understand what I mean at the end. doctors and counselors in a desperate effort to help her son, but he continued to slip away. The expert help didn't work. People tend to go, oh no, they'll be right. They're not, they're not. Like thousands of Australian parents, Debbie realised she was navigating a mental health care system that's failing to engage at-risk young men. We've got a real issue in Australia with cultures of uh, young men's mental health, which are clearly aligned with their thoughts and identification around masculinity. Did you hear that? This is important information. Let's, let's, okay. Mental health. And the, the, this is clearly aligned with their thoughts and identification around masculinity. Is, am, I, am I masculine? Okay? It's a very powerful thought that this guy actually brought up. He brings it up. Masculinity. Masculinity, femininity. It is rampant in our society. We need to understand it. Okay? Everyone is talking about masculinity and femininity and have no idea what they're talking about. Although you get some small nuggets here and there of people that are like actually saying something that's worthwhile listening to. Okay? But on this channel you get that information and it's clear, it's specific, and it will change your life. Dr. Simon Rice from Origin, a leading youth mental health research group, agrees with Debbie that our mental health care system is broken for blokes. What has happened is that uh, mental illness and mental ill health has been aligned with weakness and vulnerability and a strong sense of shame. Shame is a really powerful emotion and it prevents people from talking uh, and it prevents people from seeking help. Okay, so, and this is true. You, you have a, a big movement in, in the, this sphere, so to speak, of, of men saying that it's okay to speak up. 
It's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay. There's nothing shame in that, etc., etc. And I completely agree. Okay. But, but as a man, you very often, you're designed in such a way that you don't want help. You want to figure it out yourself because at one point in the future, you want to be a man, meaning you're able to stand on your own two feet and you do it so, so well that you're actually able to lead others. That's masculinity to leadership. And if you're weak or, you know, and, and you have to ask for help, like you feel that you're not a man. You feel that, you know, it's it, like he says, that you feel shameful that you're asking for help. You feel shameful that you feel depressed. You feel shameful that, you know, you, you're, you're in a hopeless situation. Okay, that's a problem. If it leads you to suicide, or if it leads you to, to an extreme difficult mental health circumstance where you're isolating yourself and you don't want to talk to anyone, you begin to develop social anxiety and all that stuff that men develop these days, there's a problem. What should men do? Should men always keep stuff to themselves and not show others that they're vulnerable? No, I think that's a horrible advice, okay? But you shouldn't show women that you're weak. I don't recommend that because women around you, when you're weak, they become scared and they begin to freak out and they begin to leave you and they begin to like, oh, I, I can't, I, because it's, 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 against a man's nature and when a woman is not attracted to that she can't be attracted to that because of evolution she needs to be around a man who has power who has the ability to do and if he's in a hopeless situation and has an inability to get him out of his situation then the woman is like i have to distance myself from this because i will drown with him if i let him if i allow him to to drag me down there with him so women are preserving themselves, breaking up with these guys and staying away or never being attracted to them in the first place. And that's a good thing from an evolutionary standpoint because we want the human race to improve and become better over time and become stronger and more able, right? But women can't hold on to weak men. And this is not any fault of women. This is just how men are designed. They're not designed to share with women that they're vulnerable. However, they're very much designed to share with other men. And this is where society is, is uh, not up to par in terms of helping young men because they don't have role models. They don't have father figures. They don't have men who've gone before them and who actually care enough about them to actually invest in them in their lives. That's what we need more of. And in many ways, that's part of what I'm doing with this channel. I want to help young men to understand the principles that I had no idea about growing up. That I'm so grateful that I know today. I want men to, to have that information. I want them to, to, to grasp it from an early age, preferably age 12, okay? Because there's, there's, there's so much joy and happiness to get from life if you understand it. But the problem is that people don't very often. And then they hold everything in and everything, you know, they're bullying and the teasing and, uh, you know, being beat up at school and all of this stuff that happens to young men these days. They don't want to say anything to anyone and they're trying to, to, you know, solve it themselves and they're trying to just suppress it. Then it becomes a problem. So you need role models. You need a coach or a father figure or someone that can guide you along that says to you, it's okay. You are enough. You are amazing the way you are. You never have to worry about your low self-worth because you, as a human being, being alive, you're extremely important. And I believe that wholeheartedly. No matter who you are, you're extremely important. And you might not feel like you're important, but you are important for some individuals. And if you aren't important to any of them, and that's very rare that there are people who exist who are not important to anyone, okay, in their local vicinity, even if you're not important to them, you're important to me, okay? Every single soul, every single man, woman, and child has importance. And we need to recognize that. And we need to help them. 
this is also a, a call to those that actually are kind of okay that are that are not struggling with these things your job is to help those that are okay because there are people who are struggling unnecessarily simply because they don't have the information and they don't have that uh, the upbringing that you might have had this is our job as a you know humanity as a society to figure these things out and help them from the get-go preferably in in a prevention type uh, type situation like we want to prevent this from happening the only way to prevent this from happening is from from having strong father figures in every single boy's life and every daughter's life for that matter the father in the home is crucially important but he needs to be high value in the home and and for those of you who are familiar with my channel you understand how how important that is and how that works if you don't, then study the Women of High Value channel, link down below. We need to help them. And if you're struggling yourself, you need to reach out and get help from people that you look up to. Okay? And, and be open with them. Be honest about your struggles, about the thoughts that you have. Be vulnerable. The five phases of leadership, and every single person on planet Earth is in, you know, of men, are in one of these phases okay all of us should be in number one what are the phases number one allow yourself to be led number two lead yourself number three lead others number four lead women number five lead kids number one this is the one thing that men don't want to do very often because they don't want to be looked at as vulnerable. But the ones that are willing to allow themselves to be led by other people that have gone before them, their whole lives change. Okay? And I want that for you. Allow yourself to be led. Be vulnerable. But only with your role models. You don't have to be vulnerable with the whole world. You don't have to talk about all of your issues and problems on Instagram or on YouTube or, you know, or, or whatever. You simply need someone, one or two or three guys that you can speak openly to. And this is my situation. And I hope you don't judge me accordingly. I, I just need to get out of it. And I'm trying to figure it out. And I'd love to help, you know, get your help if, if you're able to. Do you understand what I mean? This is, this is what we need. And, uh, white collars don't really know what they're doing they really don't because they're struggling themselves very often a series of setbacks triggered Fitzy's downfall remember what I said in the beginning Footsy and girls a series of setbacks triggered his downfall listen to what they are a broken relationship what do you know? An ankle injury that saw him hang up the boots for good. And an ankle injury that saw him hanging the boots up for good. He had grown a massive attachment to his sport. Okay? Great. Fantastic. That's fantastic. But should you have such a powerful attachment to the sport that you want to kill yourself when, you, when you're not able to play it anymore? See that 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 not that's going past lines. But the biggest problem was actually the broken relationship. What have I said about relationships? Don't do it. Voluntary celibacy. Stay away from porn, stay away from masturbation, stay away from women until you've got yourself right. Obviously, he was in a difficult circumstance already before he entered the relationship. Trust me, she probably broke up with him because of his issues that he already had from before emotional baggage and then she's like this is toxic and I can't handle this and so they probably broke up I don't know what happened I have no idea I don't know this guy but that's what happens the majority of the time just I've made one video about this semen retention and being broken up with or whatever that video is called I need to make another one because it's it's crucial so many of you guys have been broken up with okay that's and it's a problem so it's much better to just procrastinate that aspect of your life and then set up yourself financially and emotionally because that's what happens when you begin to focus on the financial aspect of things you have to grow you have to develop 
getting to that hundred thousand k us dollars for example you know a, a, a year i mean not a year but a net worth that is huge and that you became something while you did that okay getting to that one million dollar you became someone as you did that okay now do rich people commit suicide yeah absolutely but the the basic reason why people uh, commit suicide or get depressed etc is always always having to do with relationships always this is also the thing that will actually create the most joy bliss and happiness in life once you figured out relationships but that's the thing that is uh, the cause of our downfall and how we view those relationships and our inability to solve those relationship issues if all of your relationships in your life was flippin amazing you'd never think of committing suicide right the only reason why you're down that far is because you've got relationship issues simple as that really so um yeah Let's keep going. He began abusing drugs and alcohol and lying to his family and friends. He became angry and withdrawn. On the day that he died, he borrowed my car on a Sunday, so I went into his room. I grabbed my keys, I looked at him, and I go, you are going to be in so much trouble because you have a lot of work, you know. And um, I went off to, to work thinking, oh, well, he, he'd have a good weekend, you know. Everything would have been fine. And then at one o'clock, I got a text message. The message was his farewell note. I went straight home, went straight home, and that was it, my whole world just crumbled. Yeah, it's a vision I'll never forget. <laughs> never. The impact of Fitzy's death sent a great wave of grief through his tight knit community in the foothills of the Dandenong Ranges in Melbourne. Best mates, Todd Morgan and Jacob O'Loughlin, are still coming to grips with how their friend became a suicide statistic. Do you remember the last thing he said to you? Yep, got a message from him. Yeah, but this is our man we're going to make this week. I love you, Donnie. You're always being me, mate. That's the last thing I got from you. That's how back now I love you too. God, you're an idiot. But I love you. And then that's all. That was the last thing I got from you. So he had a relationship. He had a good friend. But that friend wasn't enough to stay alive. Okay? So there's something deeper here. And I, and I seriously believe that the sexual relationship that he had was a huge part of this. Huge. Absolutely huge. Okay? This is called one-itis. You understand what one-itis is? When one man is focused on one woman. And very often, it happens in your teenage years where you can't live without her. You just can't. It is her. She's my soulmate. Oh my gosh. Okay? No offense, I understand how you feel. I've been there, I had that, okay? I was 18 years old, I wanted to get married to this high school sweetheart, who was in her junior year, by the way. I was in my senior year, we were both, you know, I was living in the States as a, as a uh, what's it called, exchange student, and I was like, this is the woman I wanna marry. And we were together for two years, two and a half years, okay? Like, and, and she was amazing. What happened? She broke up with me, okay? <laughs> and, and I had to go through that same experience. I wasn't suicidal. I definitely cried, okay? I was a little baby, and, but that's okay. And I had to get over myself. The best thing that I, that I uh, did was that I got back to work, okay? I began thinking about other people instead of myself. When you have one-itis, you very often think about yourself. Yeah, you think about the girl, but you're thinking mostly about yourself because you were in love and now that in love emotion is gone, right? I understand and I'm, I'm being sympathetic, you know, and, and it, like, I want to help you guys to understand that you need to procrastinate the female relationships that you have until you've got your stuff right. Okay, or else you're going to be a weak man that becomes weaker as a result of the breakup that's going to happen. Because women are, they break up very easily with you if they're not attracted to you anymore. And when you're weak, they won't be, right? So, um, 
So I highly encourage you guys to, to subscribe and follow my channel to get the, the tips necessary for you to set you to prioritize your life accordingly so you set yourself up for joy, bliss, and happiness long term. Not just for now, okay? We're taking baby steps out of, out of, out of the situation that you're in, okay? And, and that's how it has to work. And SR, semen retention, huge part of it. But in order for you to accomplish that, you got to do the 80 hour work week. And then you might say, yeah, but there's people who do the 80 hour work week and they're absolutely depressed, etc., etc., as well. You need the 80 hour work week with an exit strategy. The really, the only thing that men need, they need options, okay? And they need to know that there's hope, okay? Whenever there's a wall here, they need to know that there's another path for me to take. Fantastic. Oh, they need another wall, but then there's, an, there's another path to take. And then there's someone helping them along the road to avoid the biggest walls and the biggest hurdles in life. And the ones that he's mentioned that he struggled with and the ones that I've talked about here now are the biggest struggles. So if you understand how women work and understand... Understand the woman, you'll understand the world, seriously. Again, subscribe to the channel down below, Women of High Value Channel. Suicide is the leading cause of premature death in Australia. The numbers are shocking. Every day, six men in this country take their own lives, and the men drastically outnumber the women. Three quarters of all Australians who suicide are male, and for those aged in their 20s, suicide makes up a third of all deaths. They're, they're broken, broken. They're, they're tired, they're lost, they're, 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 they're trying, trying to help themselves, but it's not working. It's not working. No purpose, and very often having had a sexual relationship way too early in their lives. Those are the two things that, and, and, if, and if they haven't had that sexual relationship, they are extremely vulnerable because they've never had that relationship. Do you understand what I mean? Like it's either you had it and then you lost it and then you feel like a complete, you know, worthless type of guy because no woman wants you or your woman specifically doesn't want you or you've never had a woman in your life and you don't think that you'll ever be able to get a woman in your life and so you're like, what's what's the point? You know, and this is, it's, it's really at the core of the matter, but, but, but it won't go that far towards suicide unless you begin to get addicted to other things as well. Okay? It doesn't just happen because of lack of purpose and, you know, and, and a breakup or, or inability to get girls. Although that could be the beginning start of it where you really, really want a girlfriend or, and you really struggle with, with, the, with that aspect or you, she's broken up with blah, blah, blah. But it always leads you, okay? Like if... If you don't figure those things out, it will lead you towards desiring immediate gratification because you want to be, you want to feel good, you want to be cuddled, you want to make, you want to be told that it's okay, and your stimulants are telling you that it's okay. Okay, your porn is telling you it's gonna be okay. Well, it's not. Okay, that they're lying to you by you using those substances and those stimulants to get that immediate gratification spike. Okay? It's only going to get better if you actually begin to figure out your purpose. Right? And there is one purpose that every single man in the entire universe can use to get themselves on track. That's masculinity. Masculinity should be the ultimate purpose of every man. The moment a man makes masculinity his purpose, he will never be suicidal. Ever. Because he has a purpose. He has a direction. He knows where he's going. And if he doesn't know where he's going, once he understands masculinity, then he's chosen not to follow masculinity, and so he's basically using stimulants to suppress all of his issues away. That's at least that's my experience of what I've seen. One young man who also understands the pain behind our country's high suicide rate is Jake Edwards. I think after the moment he comes to mental health and depression, we don't want people to fix it. We, we just, just need, need people, people to, to, to understand it. It's so interesting that they're not talking about the root cause of it all. Like they're talking about it as if it's a, a disease that, you know, and they need medication and they need, I mean, this guy is saying, you know, just, just someone to listen, 
someone to understand what you're going through, you know? And and I agree with that, absolutely. But but the I'd I'd like it to be in simple terms the way that I'm explaining it to you guys, please. <laughs> you know? I hope I hope this helps you and helps you understand the people that are struggling and suffering. And it's not a joke, right? They need our help, but we need to understand how how it works in order for us to help them. A proud country lad, 29-year-old Jake, was drafted into the AFL straight out of high school. And his future looks set. But, like 50, his life came crumbling down during his early 20s, and by age 26, he too tried to take his own life. Why did they not mention the same things? Okay, I want to hear why his life crumbled. Now he's committed to helping those most affected by suicide. But maybe, maybe he mentions it. I don't remember. And he found a new teammate. Oh. I'm sure you got a massive impact. We're going to change the world. We are. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a time. Yeah, absolutely. Like Edward is also sick of the stigma surrounding suicide and men's mental health. A lot of people may look at me externally and say, I've got it all together and it's all set up and it's perfectly structured. It's never been that way. Because behind closed doors, it's a constant battle. He tells his harrowing story of suicide survival and beating depression, hoping it'll break through to the young men who right now are falling through the cracks in the healthcare system. Do you think Jake could have saved Fitzy's life? Yes. I think so. Because he could. It's not the healthcare system that's gonna save boys' lives, okay? This, this is people actually caring about these guys individually. Okay, it has to be brought down to uh, someone physically, someone taking personal responsibility for that young man's life and helping them to get to the next level so that you know we're, we don't have to worry about them committing suicide right to depend on the government to solve this problem is is ridiculous they're never going to solve this problem ever the government as like they're too worried about keeping the power that they have and and you know trying to to survive hyperinflation which all governments at some point will have to go through that they don't have time for this <laughs> you know what i mean so, so that this is something that we as a, a society has to take take grasp and hold up. Absolutely. Yeah. Forty, forty player, forty player. Instead of a white suit. What was the point when you felt like you had no other option but to end it? Yeah, so there's a point in my life. Um... Do you notice that where you did not have any other option but to end it? You see, that's that's the the situation that they're in. There's no option. I don't have any other. There's no no way out of this. I, I have to do it. You know, you don't have to do that. Okay. And there are plenty of options. And you see, the scarcity mindset. That that's basically what it is. That's femininity. Okay. You move towards masculinity. There's abundant of options. Like you don't understand how much options you actually have. It's insane how much option there is. Okay, so, but that's the switch that needs to be made in your brain and in everyone's brain. That there's plenty of options. Scarcity or abundance? Which one do you think is going to give you joy, bliss, and happiness? Obviously, abundance. But you got to believe first that there is abundance. And I can tell you for a fact that there is. For everyone. Okay? It's, it's not like some people get abundance and some people get scarcity and that's just how it is. No, no, everything has a cause and effect, and you can be your own cause to create the effect of abundance. But let's, let's hear his story. We're all just kind of snowballed into, into a two-month period. I had a, a partner in mind at the time who walked out of my life. You heard that? I had a partner at, that walked out of my life. Interesting how that works. one itis people, okay? That one person. She's the one. No, she's not the one. Okay, I've I have a wife. I've been with her for eleven years. She is the one for me. 
But if she were to leave me, which he's not going to, because I understand how relationships work, it would not be the end of the world, okay? I could get another girl very easily. I could. And yes, of course, it would be absolutely horrible, okay? Like, I mean, if a woman leaves me, this is what happened the, t the three times that I got dumped before, my, before I got married, okay? You want to hear that story? This is how it worked, because I've gone through the breakup stories. Fortunately, I was a virgin when, at the time when I got married. So I didn't go through the sexuality and loss of sexuality, okay? That was good on me because I probably would have been more depressed. But I, but I, got, I got somewhat, you know, it, like my depressions lasted for like a few days, maybe a, a couple of weeks, but that was it, okay? Well, what happened? Well, they dumped me and then I'd be like, what? This doesn't make any sense. And then I'd basically go through all of it, you know, talk to people and whatever, like da da da. And, and then I'd be like, are you kidding me? Like, this is ridiculous. Like, she's breaking up with me. That's fine. I'd, I'd like that she literally doesn't understand what I have to offer. And I'll move on. And that's what I did. And with that first girlfriend, I, I left. Like, I departed. Like, my, my uh, statement became, you know, that I told myself, depart speedily. Okay? Leave. If she doesn't want me, I don't want her. And for, for those of you who have been broken up with, I wish, like, I truly hope that that's what you, the, the mindset that you can have. That you've got extreme amounts of value, that it doesn't make any sense when the woman dumps you. But I hope that she dumps you. Okay? I'm gonna make that video. Your breakup is the best thing that ever happened to you in your entire life. Okay? That's not, that wasn't their mindset when they got broken up with. That can be yours. That's a choice. If you're feminine, well, you can't control your thoughts, emotions, and behavior, so it's very difficult to say that it is a choice. It's not really a choice if you can't control it, can you? But you got to start somewhere. You got to take a baby step of maybe, maybe it's true. You know, allow me to infuse you with the hope and the understanding that you're better than that. Okay, and you and and her leaving you is simply a, a, an, a fact of you not understanding women. You not understanding what was necessary for her to stay with you. If you truly, absolutely had to have her with you, okay? You don't need any one girl, ever. That's fantastic if you understand how to retain women because then you can actually say that she's definitely the one for me. Like my wife, for example. Like, I can say that because I know she's going to stick around. Why? Because I got the information and I'm applying it. And when you apply correct information, you get the results, right? And I want that for you guys. I'm just, I'm trying to help you guys understand that I've gone through this of being dumped as well. <laughs> I was dumped number one. And that was the earlier, the one that I explained about where I cried. And then I forgot myself and went to work. That was, that was when I was 19 years old in South Africa. Okay, and then second of all, I got a second girlfriend that I was supposed to marry, blah, blah, blah. She dumped me too. And I'm like, what? And so I departed speedily, and I was like, this is ridiculous. And then I had a third girlfriend, and guess what? She dumped me too. So it's like a continual thing that happens to me all of the time. And I was just like, I'm the common denominator. I obviously don't know what I'm doing, and I didn't understand that at that point. But I had the self-worth, okay, to understand that if they don't see what I see in me, fantastic. I don't want to be with them either. Okay, but this was when I didn't understand how things worked. Now that you know, after two or three years of marriage, when we're beginning to, she was beginning to want to divorce me because, like, I had no idea what I was doing and I was kind of repelling her towards doing that. I had to figure that out, okay, and we did. And now she's never gonna leave me because we figured it out. Do you understand what I mean? Anyway, I'm just kind of, I'm helping you guys understand procrastinate women as long as possible until you've got the strong financial foundation, not for the women, but for you, for you, okay? So you've known you've accomplished things. You're able to do things. You've got power. It's not so the woman can spend your money or so that, you know, or that you, you attract her because of your fancy car. Who cares? It's about your character. It's about who you've become and the power and the confidence that you have like grounding you, right? And then you can get the women. Easy. And you can get three women.
as I teach on the Women of High Value channel, right? Why stop with one, okay? One woman makes you sick. Like, I, I, and I'm not saying that one woman makes you sick. I'm just kind of, I am saying that. In the sense of you're going to struggle with motivation long term for the rest of your life if you accept monogamy as the rule, okay? Don't sleep around. That's the worst thing that you can do. Never ever sleep with anyone that's not your long, lifelong committed partner. But you can have three that you commit to for life who love each other and who love you. Anyway, I teach that on the, on the Women of High Value channel. But he had the same problem, broken up with. Financially, I was struggling quite a lot. I just made a decision when she walked out. I said, this thing you call life, I just suck at it. And he didn't have any money. What do you know? I'm failing. My family's consistently worried about me and my mates. I can't be honest to them. So that's it, I'm done. And I remember consciously thinking, I'm going to try and take my own life. And in my mind, it was very much all or nothing attack. I wasn't thinking about the pain and anguish I would have caused on my family and my friends. Interesting. Okay. That's also femininity, by the way, because you're only thinking about yourself. But it's a warped femininity with masculinity, which makes it worse, right? Because the, the, the masculinity aspect is selfishness. Like we are selfish by nature as men. Which is a good thing because then we want to create win-win situations. And we never enter into an agreement with something that doesn't benefit us. Right? Selfish. Women are able to, to enter into relationships where they're not benefiting much, okay, if, if the, the environment sets them up to do so. Like, for example, children, okay? Like, getting kids for a woman is, is not very beneficial. Like, it's not a win-win situation in the first few years, okay? It's a struggle, especially if she's alone with multiple kids. But as a man, we're selfish by nature. But you combine that together with the femininity of caring Okay, but caring about what other people think and then caring about oh, this and that failure and this and that or, and caring about what what my mates will think if I tell them that I'm thinking about this and that and the other. Th that combination is horrible, right? But if you get like, see, you, you see this though? It's, it's femininity that's the problem here. That's it. If you have masculinity, you would actually, uh, femininity is scarcity mindset, right? There's no one to talk to. I'm all alone. Everything's hopeless. Masculinity is knowing there's an abundance of options and there's an abundance of people to talk to. And if I lose a friend, I can get another friend. If I lose a family member, I can get another family member, right? You know, if, if I lose a girlfriend, I can get another one or three. There's always, always options, no matter who you are and what your circumstance is. I want to drill that into your brain so you understand that, so I can brainwash you to believe in yourself. Because you should, right? Mental health was the scariest thing that I could ever imagine. Using his own experiences, Jake is now shaking up how mental health services are offered in the community. So my role in setting up this organization is to relate to you guys, to build a rapport and to help you get to where you need to get. Jake's program, called Outside the Longer Room, was rolled out here at the Long Beach Football Club in Melbourne's southeast. It's had a huge impact amongst the young players. How are you feeling? Nervous. Debbie and Jake, a suicide survivor and a grieving mum, now tell their stories together. What you know, I hope that he would have said or done was make one more phone call that day, and that was to me, instead of leaving it. And that's the other thing, call your mums. Your mums will never ever let you down. Never. Except for the fact that those blokes needed a dad, right? And that's what's kind of sad about all of this is that mothers aren't really able to help their sons that much when it comes to this stuff because it, they're, they're, they're different. Men and women are different. So women can nurture boys until a certain age, but once those boys become, you know, older teenagers and in their 20s their mothers can just like can listen to them and whatever but it's not really gonna get to you know men's brains because the man will always believe that she, I can't take advice from women like this she doesn't understand what's actually going on and I can't really help her see the picture that I'm seeing you understand what I mean? Because she'll think different. Men need men. 
in this circumstance. When men are in a, a very tight situation with their femininity and, and they, their scarcity mindset, they can't talk to people who have scarcity mindsets. And unfortunately, if a mother is burdened, she's going to have a scarcity mindset. If a mother is masculine, she's going to have a scarcity mindset. A, a, a scarcity mindset man who's struggling with, with thoughts of suicide and depression, he needs a man who has abundance. He needs a man who understands what's happening and can help him out and explain that, bro, you can do this. Because there's a connection there to help the feminine man out of his situation and become more masculine. That's what the man needs. Okay, just just wanted to put that in there because like, but of course we understand the, the how wonderful women are and of course they want to help, but in this situation, they're not very good helpers. And a lot of the, the, the mental health, you know, professionals very often are women as well. So if men are trying to be helped by women, it's not going to work very well. Men need men if they're in a feminine situation. Do you feel like this is what you're supposed to be doing every single day? Think about what I'm doing today, and then I realize how much I hate football, mate. It's nothing. What Jake is doing here is fantastic, is amazing, and I'm very grateful for what he's doing because it's, it's so important. I have the opportunity now, a second, second chance in your life, and, and I'm being that, and, and I don't take, take that for granted. If after watching this story you need to speak with someone, you can call Lifeline on 13 11 14. Absolutely. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips. So I completely agree. I hope you guys um, got some very important information out of this. Uh, I'm very grateful for my parents and for my uh, the self-worth that I got ingrained from an early age being the youngest in my family. Okay, we the youngest child very often has a, has a. Uh, they do have some benefits, okay, that, that, that uh, help them to have a very healthy self-esteem because they're protected by their mothers, you know, whenever, and they're not expected to do much, like they don't have much responsibilities from zero to eight to ten years old, you know, we can have fun, we can do whatever we want pretty much and we get away with it, right? That's kind of how childhood is supposed to be like and I had that. So this gave me a chance to actually have healthy self-esteem, but also give me the opportunity to analyze and observe my elder siblings, right? And see what was happening in their lives and their struggles, and then take, you know, take the information that I got from there and want to research how this all works. Like my, my biggest desire in life was to understand relationships and to understand family, because I, I knew deep down and I think we all do understand that family and relationships are the things that create the most joy bliss and happiness in life so if you want to understand joy bliss and happiness which we should all understand we all have to understand that in order to have it you can't have something long term and not understand it this is the same thing as, as someone who wants to get rich but he doesn't understand how money works he doesn't understand how to make money how to how to retain money and how to grow money Right? Someone who makes, who, who suddenly gets a million dollars winning the lottery or whatever, he hasn't understood money, so he loses it. So if you somehow manage to get joy, bliss, and happiness, and then you lose it, and you don't know how you got it in the first place, that's depressing. Okay? Just as depressing for the person who wins the lottery and then has wasted all the money. Because they experience joy, bliss, and happiness for a time, and then it's gone. Right? You need to understand the basics of what it takes to become happy all of the time. And that science, that information is out there. And I hope that you can get some of that information right here from this channel. You guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.